Let me introduce you to commentator Sam Armstrong, who is live for us in the studio. He's been joining me since 6.30. Um, interesting to hear from Rupert Darwell and from Kemi Bidnor. I thought what was very interesting was Rupert talking about how seismic this announcement was and, and how, you know, we agree with me, you know, we need to, you know, welcome <laughs> repenting sinners. But putting to Kemi Bidnor, you know, you know this, this is all about being honest with, with, with the voters. Well, that's great. You know, this is going to cost a fortune and it's not worth it, basically. Our press British families need to be safe from all this, is what the Prime Minister is saying. But, but my question, well, but, but what's changed in the last week? There's no new information. Absolutely nothing that to have changed that. But what Kemi Badnock said that was incredibly interesting, Julia, was that the Prime Minister was trying to focus on getting his five priorities done and now he's making the tough decisions. Yeah. Now, we've read for a long time that the PM is focusing on delivery and then closer to the election he's about to roll out some red meat for the likes of you and me to enjoy. Uh, enough of the, uh, the, the, the vegan... Uh, uh, roles that have been served to us so far and we're going to see some of this stuff. Now, I think that what Kerry Badnock's uh, comments to you show is this is just the opening salvo. Yeah. Yeah. And we are going to begin to see a little bit of Conservative government again. Which... <laughs> Don't be silly. Are you... Don't well... be silly. We've, had the Green... We've been electing the Green Party since uh, roughly 1997. That is, that is well. Uh, we haven't got a choice, but that's the thing. Really, 1992, people, possibly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. We haven't, we really haven't had a choice. And again, when you talk about, you know, the Theresa May pushing through that measure in 2019, the Climate Change Act. I mean, this, they're basically tying the hands of the government, and everyone's signing up to this stuff. But I think this again. I think this is very similar to stuff like, you know, like the trans issue. I think these, we talk about these as culture wars. It's about everyone having to go. Oh no, the nice people, the good people, the people I agree with on lots of other things. They, the, they. They say this, and therefore I have to play along. And they're thinking, hey, is this a good idea? Are we sure about this? These huge costs involved, or, or you know, children being having their bodies, you know, having, you know, healthy parts of their bodies surgically removed and being given puberty blockers. Is that a good idea? And people want to say, and until someone actually says, sorry, this is completely wrong. It won't work, or it's deeply immoral. In the case of you know the the, the transitioning for children, um, the, the people then people go. Oh yeah, well I agree with that, but they're scared to speak out. the The venomous attacks that get uh, put on, you know, anyone who questions anything about any climate change story, even just saying, I mean, all summer, you know, the the the, the fires in in uh, in Greece, uh, you know, and and saying, pointing out that, and and in and in, in other parts of the, the Europe as well, pointing out that actually these weren't caused by climate change; they were caused by arsonists. But, oh, you a climate denier! Well, no, no, the police have arrested, you know, a load of people for setting fire to forests. I mean, I'm not saying it, but the idea that you immediately get branded a bad person, um, a, an extremist, if you speak out on this. So he's kind of tipping his toe into the water, isn't he? Well, I do think there's a there's a massive case of Stockholm Syndrome in this oh, country, yeah. that our political class have gone mad and bonkers on a whole host of issues. The British public do not believe that you should be slicing off children's genitalia. The British public do not believe that you should be banning cars or forcing everyone to use tweezers to remove parts of their uh, uh, recycling before they put it into don't. 17 different bins. They don't believe this, but we are, and I'm the first to admit that I'm guilty of this. We turn around when a politician like Rishi Sunak says the inevitable, says something that is just basic common sense, and we're like, oh, fantastic, we've got a great politician. It, some of it, I just wish we could say for once in a while, just how sick, how mad, how mm. bizarre is our entire political Islingtonian, yeah. mad London, metropolitan class that yeah. we were ever going down this line in the first place when the public overwhelmingly don't want it. No, they don't. But, but, but the public are often polled on things and, and we're told, I mean, again and again, you're told by people, no, no, people, people are absolutely turned up. The environment is one of their biggest concerns. Yeah, of course it is, until they're asked to pay for it. People, would people like there to be not be litter in the street and, and, and not to be, you know, he heavy pollution on, on, on major roads? Of course they would. Of course they would. I mean, you know, they're not idiots, you know. Um, but but that's the key thing. It's when you are you actually ask people to pay more. It's like saying people are quite happy to pay more taxes for the NHS. Well, until you actually put their taxes up. I mean, when they did actually have that predicated tax, you know, completely ring fence, an extra one one percent on national insurance uh, was it one p was it one p in the pound on national insurance under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown to pay for the NHS. Massive support for that. And then and then I found out years later that when they'd focus grouped it, people genuinely thought they were paying an extra penny a year.
They genuinely, they were, they were paying hundreds of pounds extra a year. They thought they were paying a penny a year. So yeah, I'm going to get a greater, a better NHS for a penny a year. What's not to like? People have not been told, and that's something Rishi Snet was very straightforward about. People have not been told what the actual cost of net zero are, because they are huge. They are tens of thousands of pounds per household. Yeah, and by the way, there's an awful lot of people, some of whom I'm, to be frank, I'm not talking about anyone in particular here, uh, are not exactly the most uh, ethical people on earth, who are doing extremely well out of this. You who are listening to this are paying to enrich yeah. dodgy dealers, wheeler dealers, all sorts of people that are doing deals behind closed doors yeah. that you've never heard of, yeah. wouldn't know of, that are building themselves McMansions. Yes. yes. Uh, well, we're constantly told. I mean, always, people always say to me, oh, yeah, who's paying you? You're a shill. I was, I'm was. i still waiting for the checks. If Shell or BP would like to send me a check for me giving the views that I've been holding for years and years, I'd be very, very happy to accept their money. I've never had a check for any of these people. Never even accepted you a dinner from these people. They've never been offered. I'm happily, I would happily do so. Um, but it is true, you're always told, oh, you're just, you're doing it, you're saying it for, for effect. The, the poor people who live with me and work with me, well, even the misfortune going to the pub with me, will know that I spout this stuff day in, day out. I am, you know, I'm evangelical about this stuff. On air, off air, exactly the same. Oh, my poor friends and family, sorry. But, but the key thing here is that it's this idea there's always big money trying to stop the green agenda. It's the other way around. The green agenda is so well funded. You've got billionaire after billionaire funding it. You've got a lot of people, the Al Gores and others, who've made an entire career, an entire fortune out of spouting this nonsense. Greta Thunberg makes a fortune out of this stuff. It is the climate industrial complex. Yep. This is an industry. They rely on keeping scaring people so that governments keep handing them more and more and more and more of your money. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, and it is. It is our money. They don't, whenever we're told it's, no, there'll be subsidies, there'll be grants. I mean, one of the things I've definitely criticised is the, the yesterday, the announcement of a, this issue about peat pumps, which cost, what, three times as much as, uh, as gas boilers, and, by the way, don't work in most homes. If you've got a super-duper modern home, you live in you know, Finland, where you know, the homes are designed to withstand you know, m minus degrees for, for months on end in the winter, then, yes, fine, it'll work fine uh, when you've got all that space around you, but not for your average terraced house in this country, or certainly not for a flat like I I live in but uh, raising the grants to 7500 that's a subsidy to the rich from ordinary taxpayers yeah and for what for a bizarre religious cult i mean yep. greta thunberg is the mad street preacher that stands on the street and says the end of the world is nigh the world is going to end next week yep. and then it doesn't and they're still there and what do we do rather than what you would do when you saw that on the street walk past and snigger we fate her. We put her on the TV. We send her to the her to UN. Presidents. We introduce her to the president, to the royal family, and we listen and we fund these people. We're yeah. mad. We're being taken for chumps. Yeah, again, and it uh, is time to get off the merry-go-round. Are we doing it? I, I think, again, I think uh, that we, are, we have hit a key point, a turning point on this, and let's hope the sanity is always return. But again, um, we should always criticise when governments don't go far enough or do the wrong policy, but when they do something in the right direction, I'm sorry, I'm going to applaud. Well done, Rishi Sunak.